take it. Two legends in basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know, what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here. With well, it's that time again. It's time for the Bob Ryan, Gary Tangley, Zulu Pod here on CLNS. And we are brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. Bob, first we have to explain the hat. The L is not for luscious. The L is not for love. The L is not for loser. What is the L for? L is for the Lawrenceville School, uh, my alma mater, where uh, we had our reunion weekend this past weekend. And in my class, in case it was our 60th, we're the class of 64. And uh, it was a really, we had Chamber of Commerce weather for once. And it was a really nice time. I got reunited with one of our classmates who was the captain of our basketball team who hadn't come, he hadn't come back in 60 years. He, he decided it's about time he made a return to Lawrenceville. And that was great to see him, Jim Mitchell, who now known as Jim Alexander. And that's another story. But anyway, um, he was a captain. He was our only dunker. <laughs> we, we, uh, we were a bunch of Caucasian guys from the sixties, you know? So uh, we had one dunker. That was Jim Mitchell. That was it. And, uh, but it was a great weekend. And I'm honoring, uh, as you all know, our national champion lacrosse team that, uh, literally, they are the national champions, and and uh, that that's a sport that was inaugurated uh, by some of my classmates back in circa 1962, and uh, that I, they were members of the very first lacrosse team at Lawrenceville. So they're really proud of what these young men have been able to do. Well, as a parent of a player who played Lawrenceville this year, <laughs> I can tell you they are loaded, and they are without question the best lacrosse team in the country. I mean, for. Lines one through four, forget about it. They are a <laughs> terrific team. So, Bob, uh, yes, let's, now let, let's and Lawrenceville is a beautiful campus, by the way. I mean, it was gorgeous. Uh, so, let's get to it here. The NBA Finals coming up. Has your opinion, based on the way things have gone in the West, changed at all as far as the Celtics, how many games they need to win, <laughs> how difficult will it be? Should it be a cakewalk, et cetera? I am calling the Celtics in six. I call it a gentleman's six. By that, and I mean they will enable Dallas to depart with their dignity intact. They will feel they put up a good fight. They will go away knowing they lost to a better team. That's what I expect to happen. Uh, the playoffs have answered, well, or at least begun to answer the one big question we had, which was how will they fare with the scores tied with two minutes to go, as opposed to when they're up by 25 with, with uh, 11 minutes to go. And we know they're very good at that. Although, you know, they had a couple of blown leads here and there. But not, let's face it, this is a team that won three games by 50 points. No one's ever done that in the history of the league. Right. Um, okay. So they entered the playoffs and, and they lost Porzingis immediately. And it didn't seem to matter at all. And it hasn't mattered in, in the first three series. It'll be great to have them back in this one because these two, this team, Dallas, does. Everybody talks about Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving as they should. They're the stars. They're the guys who are going to carry them as far as they're going to go. But they've got two active, young, big men, uh, Daniel Gafford and and uh, Derek Lively. And they uh, put up astonishing statistics by the fact that what they do is they, they roll to the basket <laughs> from pick and rolls, and they follow up shots, and, and they – they, they shoot 70% from the floor because they don't take any real shots. Uh, Lively does, but not Gafford. Anyway, you're going to need Przingis in the game now at 7-3 with his defensive uh, probability to, uh, you know, keep let these guys know they're not going to have their own way all the time doing the things they love to do. And, it, and so it's important to have Przingis back for this one. Um, but let's be honest. Uh, I, I continue to say that every team, every GM in the league, every one of them would – gleefully trade his entire roster for Boston's entire roster and would say to his coach, okay, I just gave you the keys to the Ferrari. Don't screw it up. Don't drive it off the road. And uh, they have the best collection of players in the league. They have the best one to five, the best one to six, seven, eight, nine, right through 10. And, and that's, I, I, they have the best talent. And if they play their, if everybody plays the, the A game, they win and that's it. And and I expect them to, to, to uh, play well enough to win this series. I would be surprised. I think Dallas will put up a good fight. I think Doncic is a marvel for the ages. I think Kyrie has never played better basketball. He's going to be supremely motivated, you can imagine. And uh, I think they'll put up a good fight. 
And and I I think they'll win a couple of games at home. You're right. And then it all comes down to the Celtics. I mean, it's it's really it's up to the Celtics how this goes, right? I mean, they, they are the best roster. They're the best they are. If they play to their, if they play to they have the best ability. most good players they have. And right. And that's that. Now, you know, now the coach has to do his job. And, and he was a question. And I think he's proving himself as time goes on that, you know, and I said from the beginning, I, in Brad, I trust. Brad nailed it. That, that tabbed this guy. And and uh, and and so I, I trust Brad's judgment. And uh, Joe Mazzola, as we've talked about several times during the course of the winter and spring, uh, is, is revealing himself to us and in, in, in slowly coming out as a personality he's not comfortable in the spotlight he doesn't care if you ever talk to him or his name's ever in the paper i really believe that this is a he's like the polar opposite of jim harbaugh who can't stay out of the news by the way I, he's in the news again today bragging about how hard they're working in the offseason you know all right i just this guy's the polar opposite he doesn't he doesn't he, it's not about him it's totally not about him and in his mind and, and it's sincere it's who he is but he's a bright guy we we're learning that and and he has studied this game, and he's got theories about the game that are that are both uh, 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 things he's, he's gleaned from other people and things he believes himself. And I'm getting more and more impressed with Joe Mazzola. I think the criticism now that we hear about the Celtics is, okay, yeah, they closed out games, and this is not from me. They closed out games, which is what we wanted them to do. But they did it against the team with Cleveland that didn't have their star. They did it with Miami, who didn't have their star. You know, they did it with Indiana, who didn't have their star. So I'm with you. They answered the bell because, especially in the Indiana series, I mean, my God, for the first three quarters, sometimes they didn't even look like they cared. And as soon as they cared, they flipped the switch and they won the game. You know, so it's almost like they were bored. But now people are being critical by saying that, well, it should have never been that close to begin. That's fine. That's fine. I, I, But I'm glad it happened. We, I, we, we want to well, say I that, agree with you because yeah. it's a task. Now, now, they, answered, now, they, they answered the quiz. In all honesty, the one game was a giveaway, and Carlisle owned up to it. Right, and and he's and he was right. If he does the right thing and calls the timeout and gets the ball to midcourt, they they win that game. Simple as that. They win the game, but they didn't. He didn't, and they didn't. And and but uh, so of the three close wins, one was tainted for sure. One was iffy, and one was legit. All right, but uh, anyway, they they did it, and I think they're feeling better about themselves in that regard. Okay, than than they did before the thing started. Now here's the question: the question is, can Jason Tatum forego his points mm-hmm. or his one-on-one basketball for the team aspect? Because if that happens consistently, they will win going away. I I certainly hope so. I mean, I, I that's a fair question. We we need that final question answered uh, for him to. Uh, uh, he, we know how talented he is. That's not the issue. He's got raw skill. Uh, his, he, he checks all the boxes you want, uh, technically. Okay. Uh, including he's a much underrated traffic rebounder. He gets some rebounds that, that you know, I, what I call rebounds that don't belong to him. That's what a great rebounders can do. And 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 he and he can do that when it, when it's necessary. So I'm, I'm impressed with, he's a better rebounder than he's given credit for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good question, and I I'd like to think you know he says all the right things. I we'd like to think that the that uh, he has figured it out. Uh, he's been around long enough, you know. It's there's no no excuse. Uh, he's he's piling up a, a lengthy resume of, of playoff appearances, and uh, uh, he's, he's he's so it, it, time is now. And we said all year this is a now team. The time is now, and and uh, the the uh, you know remember the the guards are in their thirties, both of them, you know. So oh yeah, hey, Porzingis. And hey, Porzingis is hey, twice, Porzingis. He's 28 and he's, and he's hurt all the time. So, you know, we better, if we get him out of here, we, we want to make the best use of him in, in, in this, however many games this thing's going to take. And and we'll worry about next year, next year. <laughs> Let's get the job. Let's waste that banner this time. Well, if Jason and his, his, and, his, and his group of supporters can just understand and accept that he's not LeBron James and he's not Michael Jordan, okay? No. That, he's not Larry Bird either. And he's not Larry Bird and he's not Magic Johnson. Right. He's but Jason Tatum. He's Jason Tatum, which is still uh, an excellent basketball player. But the one thing that's missing, and, and I just think it's it's never going to change, it's his makeup. You know, that killer instinct, that 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 just that intestinal fortitude that I just think it isn't there. But I do think it gets replaced by Jalen Brown now. Mm-hmm. So I think the combination of the two, Bob, have finally clicked. 
Well, let's just hope that Brown, you know, people tried to read something into Tatum. They want, I don't know whether to do to conduct, have a, a, a cheerleading contest for Brown. When Brown got the MVP of the, of the Eastern right. Conference finals, people say, well, he didn't look that happy. You know, I, I come on, stop it. it he had his hand on his fair. shoulder, Bob. He had his hand on his shoulder. Okay. He was smiling. That's what Jason Tatum does. Furthermore, these guys are all on a business trip. It's about the championship. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up 100 times your cash. With prize picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in. Now, if you're looking for promotions, Prize Picks has got you covered every week from lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays, which increases your chance of getting a win to getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. The finals mean more on Prize Picks, and so do the star players. You get boosted playoffs on selected basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. Now, this week on Prize Picks, I'm looking at Jason Tatum. More than 26 and a half points. Jalen Brown, more than three threes, which may be aggressive, but I'm running with that. Download that app today and use a code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Bob, we know contracts and money will play a big role in this, but do you think what we're seeing lately, do you think Brown and Tatum will be, will be together for a long time? Oh, I said this is a different world. I, I Tatum's going to cash in next. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm no good at that. I'm, I'm really not. I, I just, I, I, I just, I just take what comes. I, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I just think that it's imperative to win in 2024, and and I'm not even worried. And nobody should be worried about, you know, no fan, no writer. Nobody should be worried about 2020. Five to thirty-two, or anything else. So I don't know, really. Well, I'll give you my two cents. I'm yeah. more optimistic now than I have been, because when I look at this team, and for them to be successful, I don't look at it as simply Jason Tatum's team anymore. I think it's Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's team because they each are bringing different things to the table. And if if Jason Tatum can live with that, and he gets a championship, and J and Jalen Brown can accept that role. Even though, look, Tatum's the best player on the team. But what Brown has brought this team with his intensity and his attitude is vital. So I think I just yeah. hope both of them realize that they need each other. That's all. Yeah. That, yeah. They need each other. That's that's what I right. I'll, 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 I'll go with that. You'll go with that. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Right. Now, let's get to the history part. Bob, I, I on our email chain, I was saying, how about those 74, 76 Celtics? You went into a deep dive on some things and, find, and, and it started you down a path. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, they were the same opponent uh, in the fi final at uh, 74. They played Buffalo twice. They played them in 74 and en route. And uh, in 74 and 76, and they each were six game series. They were tough series. As far as the finals are concerned, 74 was a, a, a legendary series in which the road team won the for four or five of the seven games, including the final four. And uh, the Bucks put up a great fight despite losing uh, two, thir there's two thirds of their best three backward players. And Lucius Allen was not there. Oscar Robinson was 34 years old and was on his last legs, literally, and, and uh, had a hard time coping with Don Chaney's defense. Um, Kareem carried them. It was extraordinary. People that, 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 simple today, there's nobody quite like Kareem uh, at, at, at that position anymore. And, and he, he, if it weren't for Kareem, the Celtics probably would have swept. Instead, they go seven. And a historic six game, double overtime game, wonderful, one of the great Celtic playoff games of all time, uh, which they lost in double overtime. Uh, John Havlicek had a big second overtime. It looked like he was going to be the hero and the MVP of the series. They had they won. And I uh, got one up by Kareem with a hook shot from the right corner. Yep. Uh, roughly 17, 18 feet. Nobody else makes a hook shot from the corner, 17, 18 feet, except Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Uh, and then game seven uh, was uh, uh, the Celtic triumph. 
in which Dave Cowens, who had not had a good game six at all, uh, and, and was really came out hot. Uh, they got off to a quick funny story about that. Larry Costello in the press conference the day before said, we need to get a good start. Well, the Celtics got the tap and scored. They stole the inbound pass and scored. It was 4 nothing after 12 seconds. <laughs> and that really set the tone. And the Celtics got up by 17, and uh, Kareem led them back. And Paul Westfall made a big basket on the baseline to start the run back up. Havlicek got a three-point play, an old-fashioned three-point play. Up faked at the foul line, drove to the basket, got fouled, and put the game away. And they won the game. Um, now, 76, uh, that's the year after which, you know, when uh, – uh, the Westfall trade for Charlie Scott. Charlie Scott had a pretty good year, not a great year, but a pretty good year. Uh, and then when the playoffs came, they were they won three six game series in a row, and he came up big in all three game sixes. He came up big in all three game sixes. Now game five in '76 is the famous triple overtime game, that um, one of the handful of greatest games in Celtic history. Certainly one of my my favorite moments of, of covering anything an epic game with all kinds of ins and outs. And, uh, uh, and so, but and one, one person who did not play well in that game was Charlie Scott and Red Auerbach told him after that game, he said, get your rest because we're going to need you Sunday. The game, they, they, this was on a Friday night and they were playing game six in Phoenix, roughly 12 noon Phoenix time on Sunday. I mean, a very, very quick turnaround. And, uh, Sure enough, Charlie Scott had a 25 or six point game on Sunday. Uh, Cowens had a big game and they won going away. Um, and that's, of course, one of the two times Phoenix has ever been to the finals. And, and uh, you know, it was, but they weren't supposed to be there. They were 42 and 40 in the regular season and they caught fire in the playoffs. So uh, uh, that, that's what I mostly remember uh, uh, th- about that. And uh, um, so that, that those are 74 and 76. Uh, in in 76, did, did, did Phoenix have both Van Arsdale brothers? No, here's the funny part about that. Dick Van Arsdale uh, had been a career uh, – no, he had, he had, he, he had been a, a – a, well, a, a, he came to Phoenix as an expansion player when they became – when they were formed. Right. So he had spent uh, – he, he had been with them from their inception. He had started out, uh, I believe, with the Knicks. And his brother Tom bounced around – from Detroit to Cincinnati to Philadelphia. He was a member of that 9 and 73, 76 year team in 72, 73. And he was famous for having played the most games of anybody at that time who had never been in the playoffs. Well, finally, he gets traded to join his brother for the 76, 77 season. If they're coming out of a finals, he figures, I'm going to get my playoffs, right? 77 was the only year in 10 years Phoenix didn't make the playoffs. He never played in a playoff game. Uh, he holds the record that will probably never be broken for most games played in the NBA without playing a single playoff game. <laughs> that is a tough one to swallow, and only Bob Ryan would know that. And those guys, the Van Osdales were they were the same player. Uh, their Couldn't stats, tell them apart. Look at their stats at, at Indiana. Look at their stats in the NBA. They're incredibly comparable in terms of points per game, assists, field goal percentage. And they each had the same famous spin move. I once asked them, I forget which one I asked, if they ever, you know, cheat and substituted, if they ever, you know, right. fooled people. They said in the Little League. They did it in the Little League. They switched teams and nobody didn't tell anybody. But they never. They said they never did it after that. But they could have done it. You couldn't tell those guys apart. No, I yeah, but ter- certainly from television, you never could. And they game. go on. They're the greatest twins in NBA history. Um, now, Charlie Scott and the Westfall deal yeah. was that made because Cheney went to the ABA? No, it was. Uh, I, I think I don't think it would have made it. No, that was made. I suspected and i basically had it confirmed uh that westfall was now with cheney gone definitely he would be starting right jojo had a fragile ego and that red properly recognized that jojo wasn't going to willingly accept westfall as an equal that there would be nights when westfall would get the 30 and he'd get the 10 and jojo wouldn't going to like that right and uh Traded him to, to, for a guy that JoJo would have regarded as an equal, as a peer, Charlie, Charlie Scott. Scott. And that I, I I kind of put two and two together on that, and I have had that confirmed by somebody who should know that that that's essentially true. Uh, 
you know, and Westfall went on for a five year meteoric career. Oh, he's All tremendous. Eight. Great player. Then he got hurt. He got traded to Seattle. Seattle. What hurt. Seattle? It was never the same again. But he got into the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago. Thank God. I'm glad. Uh, you know, and, and I, I was, and we were, I hit it off with him immediately. I was very funny. I, as a matter of fact, uh, had dinner at his house with my wife and, and Mike Lupica, who was a very close friend of his, and 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 Mike's date. And we were invited to Paul's house for dinner. And 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 about two days later, he got traded. He was blindsided. He had no idea. Wow. He lived in Newton, right over by Charles River Country Club. And and uh, uh, he was he he was stunned. But that worked out. It was a great career move for him in Phoenix. He right. became an icon in Phoenix. He thrived out there. He, he, and, uh, and, you know, and the Celtics didn't do anything in his absence, you know, uh, in terms of, in, you know. Oh, it, no. Until, they went down. Uh, until, After right, 76, until, they went down. No, they didn't go anywhere. And and so he was better off in Phoenix in, in his career move. Yeah, he was a terrific player. I always wondered about that because I remember him being a role player or, you know, he came off the bench. And then I was like, why, why did we let him go to Phoenix when he had such a terrific career? That's the only thing that makes sense. I've always yeah, wondered about that. But it was actually better than 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 they thought, I think. That, but still, well, uh, too, that, it, that's it what a, I wondered if they thought that he wasn't like I was thinking that maybe they didn't think he was a legit star. It had to do with with JoJo though. ego. And JoJo went on and had a couple of really excellent years. And and well, uh, you know, but is that is that one of the things that Red was great at recognizing the uh, chemistry? In it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, game time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip off. Like right now, I was looking on the app and it's really easy to use. Just download the app. Lots of pictures for us sports fans, lots of pictures. And, you know, the tickets for Celtics game one and whoever they play between six, seven hundred bucks. But the closer you get to actual tip time, it's going to go down. So you and your friends may do a last minute thing. And I know it's a lot of money, but maybe it's. Two, three of your friends. Last minute trip. Boom. Let's go. Let's see what the tickets are on game time. You never know. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Okay, here's the deal. Last minute deals save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, etc. Now, the flash deal is save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Save even more when you choose a section for the zone deals. You choose a section, let game time choose the seats. Sounds pretty good to me. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. When we're talking about pick the, the length of series and, Yo. and 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 what people are going to think, just so people know, um the Celtics have had one sweep in the finals in their entire history. And that was in 1959 when they swept a Minneapolis team that wasn't even 500 but they happened to come out of the West and win the playoffs and, and, and got the honor of getting slaughtered by the Celtics in four games. And Mike was gone by then. Yeah. No, this is Elgin Baylor's rookie year. Got it. It's the year before Jerry West. He okay. they went, and that was their last year in Minneapolis. They moved for the next season to LA. Okay. Um, the Celtics have the last five game series that they won was in 1965 against the Lakers. So the last nine ser uh, championships have either gone six or seven, just so people know that. Right. And I'm calling six with the, with the hope that it would be five, but uh, I'm calling six, but just so people know um, it, it, it didn't matter whether it was a two, three, two, which it was in 86 and in 08 or the, the much better format, two, two, one, 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 which we're back to, thank God. Um, and they have won, the last two championships have been won on game six at home. The first one in a 2-3-2 and the second one, uh, they're both in a 2-3-2. Game six was at home. This year, game six will be on the road as in the 2-2-1-1-1. So uh, anyway, uh, there you go. But uh, that's interesting. The, 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 
uh, nine in a row had taken at least six games, if not, and, uh, and, and in several cases, you know, the people, they, people uh, the, the opponent gave them a better fight than people expected. I hope people aren't thinking this is going to be any way easy uh, with the way Doncic and, and, and uh, Irving are playing. Uh, they're, they're, they deserve to be here. They, you know, they, they kind of flew under the radar at the end of the season while everybody in the West, the people were looking at who was going to come out of the West at the top, and we went, they went up in a three-way tie, you know, with tiebreakers determining who got the first seed, second seed, third seed. And then the other thing people were watching was the Lakers and the Suns, right, and the Warriors. Nobody was paying attention to Dallas. Well, at one point near the end of the year, they won 16 out of 18 right. before losing their final two. And, and um, you know, Doncic kind of led the league in scoring. And and Kyrie has found his place on earth. He's the happiest he's, I'm sure he's ever been, and and playing playing great. But the, the reason why it's important to have Porzingis back is the two young big men that you know they play in the air, right? And 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 they do what they do very well. And uh, Porzingis will be there to you know occupy a little airspace with them. Thank God, you know. Does this does this improve Jason Kidd's reputation as a head coach? I think it will. I know he's been. He, people thought of him as a mediocre coach. I know that. Uh, yeah, I would think so. And they want to play for him. They 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 sing his praises. Uh, and I think uh, they they want to play for him. They they like his approach. They like him. And uh, you know. And I, I think it's important for his lust. But you know, obviously, if he wins, it's going to really elevate him. But it, unless they get trampled, if the Celtics do surprise me right. and and sweep them or win them in, or blow them out in a five uh, uh, with, with a chintzy, you know, road game three win in, in uh, Dallas. Uh, people may hold that against them, but I think he'll come out of this with his reputation and improved regardless. As a um, <clears throat> worrisome New Englander, mm -hmm. uh, teams that are playing with nothing to lose and with house money scare the hell out of me. You know, when this tournament, as Parcells would call it, started, 16 teams, 15 of which were playing with house money, in my judgment. And I'm sticking right. to that. Even One Denver? team Even has Denver? had all the pressure. One team has had all the pressure on it, and you know who it is. And it, it, it's uh, everybody else has played with house money, has played with house money from day one. They may have had some self-imposed stuff. You know, but, I mean, they're disappointing teams, of course. But the fact is that the, as far as in terms of winning the whole thing, there's only one team with, with that had the, the absolute necessity to win, uh, because just because, and that is the Boston Celtics. They have had all the pressure. So yes, Dallas should, you know, feel I won't say loosey goosey, but they should be comfortable and do what they, you know, just the pressure's on Boston. There's no doubt. I, yeah, I, they, I, you I know, can argue. I, I'm, just, I'm just thankful. Well, I I, I believe in the maturation of of I, I've seen it of the two stars, you know, of Jalen Brown and of Tatum. I'm just really glad that uh, we have the backcourt, that White and, and, and Holiday, oh. Holiday are here. I'm just really glad to hear Oh, yeah. You know, particularly, you know, with the, with the uh, a formidable presence such as Kyrie. And, of course, Doncic, I still can't I can't think of him as a guard. Technically, he's a guard. He's whatever. You know, he's, a but, he's a basketball I, you know. player. He's a, he's a queen on the chessboard, a basketball player, as is LeBron. You know, and they both are, in a sense of, having the ball a lot and, and generating the offense of their team uh, from a position other than a so-called point right. guard, they're, they're, they're very similar in, their, in how they approach the game in that way. Um, and, and you know, the, the Doncic is sui generis, though. There's nobody quite like him, uh, you know. I mean, and and he said, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him up close and personal and how he's going uh, I, I to. Uh, I think it's going to be a much more entertaining series than people first thought. Yeah. I think the idea was if it was Denver – it was going to be competitive. If it was anybody else, the Celtics were going to blow them out. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the Celtics will win it. Yeah. But I think it's going to be more competitive than some. Oh, I, I totally agree. I, I yeah. I, I mean, Dallas, has, Dallas, has hit, Dallas has hit their stride. Yeah. And and that's uh, the guy name we should mention because he's important. Uh, well, the a name we should mention is Nico Harris because Nico Harrison, who just got a new contract, by the way, the general manager th today, as we speak, is getting a new contract uh, and deservedly so. Uh, made two season, two moves that I don't, they wouldn't be here. He got PJ Washington and he got Gafford and, and uh, they, they were not with this team at the start of the season right. and, and they would not be here without them. And uh, so he gets an executive of the year and nods and kind of stuff for that move. So uh, that, you know, that he, he's gets good, but PJ Washington's going to be around uh, for, uh, 
I don't know. He, you know, probably getting an All Star game maybe at some point. He, right. He, I, I was looking at their composition of their. Uh, and by the way, just uh, interesting to compare the the draft status of of the two teams. You know, um, I'm just curious here. There's only one number one overall pick in, in on either team. You know who it is? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, is it? That's no, not Porzingis. No, not Porzingis. Um, no. Wait. 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 Uh... People forget he was number one. Kyrie, I, I, you got. It's a great question. Who was it? Kyrie. He only Kyrie played was number games. one. He played eleven games in. For well, Duke. that's why he played eleven games at Duke. I didn't remember him being number one. Lukic was a three, and he was traded on draft night by Atlanta. Great move, Atlanta. Uh, they traded for Trey Young. Okay. Well, that yeah. Uh, Washington is a twelve. Uh, Gafford's a thirty-eight. And wow. Derek Lively, who I like and I think is going to be a good player uh, as time goes on, is going to be an important player. He's he's a 12. Uh, Derek Jones is undrafted. Hardaway Jr. is a 14, and Norman Powell is a 46. On our side, of course, we got Brown and Tatum, each number three. Porzingis was a four. White was, surprisingly, I, he was 29. He was a first-rounder, late. Uh, Holiday, 17. Here's a guy people forget. You know, it was a three third pick in the draft. Uncle Al Horford, <laughs> uh, Pritchard eleven, Hauser and Cornette both undrafted. Right. And Tillman thirty five. So anyway, for whatever it's worth, it's, it's interesting. interesting. The Kyrie and this is people have said, oh, Kyrie could fall. Look, this is it for Kyrie. He's thirty one. Oh, this he's... is his last to ride, in my opinion. So I don't think he's going anywhere. I think he's going to have a good series. Oh, I think he's and, and he's going to be supremely motivated too. Yeah. You know that he's but, but anticipating I think, but I think the Celtic Kyrie you know, thing is. I think that's going to kind of be. It's going to be basketball. And yeah, he's people who are asking me about it in the outside, I, I don't think it's going to be as big a deal as the outside world thinks it's going to be. I agree. How the how I fans agree. Are going to treat him, but guess what? The rougher they treat him, the better he'll play. I think though. I think he'll. He's he's ready for it. Oh, he's sure. definitely yeah. ready. For it. Drives on it. Um, you know. I I. You know, you know, I have my theories about Kyrie, and I, my, my sense of it is that uh, he it's falling into place for him. He's in, I think he's in a good place, the best place he's ever been as a pro uh, right. since Cleveland. And of course, you know, yeah, I mean, he, he I, that was so foolish for him to will himself out of Cleveland at the time. You know, I thought it was right. ridiculous, but that's who he was at that time. And I think he, I bet he looks back at that guy and said, "God, who was that jerk? <laughs> who, 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 who did that?" Did I you do never, that? You never know with him, Bob. <laughs> He's Bob Ryan. The L is not for luscious or lovely or loser. It is for Lawrenceville, <laughs> the great Lawrenceville alum, one Robert Ryan. Okay, Bob Goodman's up next. We're going to talk to him in a few days uh, yes. after, after game one. So we'll see you then. Finally, uh, a game. Fi no was, kidding. Finally, a game. Biggest gap ever. No. We are brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclu exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's always that easy with prize picks. Mm -hmm.